Probably the greatest recognition that the Arroyo ever got was when uh, Theodore Roosevelt visited Occidental College when it was still in Highland Park. And after he left, he traveled across the Arroyo with Charles Lummis and said that this would make one of the greatest parks in the world. People flocked here from all over the country just to revel in its beauty. And the arts and crafts movement was born out of the appreciation for the natural environment that existed here. The stone that would wash down from the mountains regularly provided the base material for the arts and crafts stonework that you see throughout this whole region. To explain Creek Daylight, and we have to start with where creeks were historically. On this land that we now see as dry, there were once creeks. Those creeks were replaced by storm drain pipes and then buried, so that now you don't see them. The hydrology of this area is now submerged, and the habitat of the riparian zones is completely obliterated. When you daylight a creek, you're essentially undoing that whole process. You are digging the earth back up, you are removing a section of pipe, and you're allowing the live flow of a stream to once again flow above ground. Right here in the East Bay, in a five square mile area, you have an example of five very successful daylighting projects in a very urban populated area. The incentives for these projects range from cleaning up an inner city derelict, crime ridden, vacant lot to addressing urban stormwater problems to this site that represents a urban housing redevelopment project. I'm on Baxter Creek in El Cerrito. It's a small a uh, creek that drains into San Francisco Bay, draining the western slopes of the Berkeley Hills. This creek was once completely underground in this reach. In 1996, the Waterways Restoration Institute got involved in this project. People found it very interesting to be able to watch the transition from this newly regraded channel into this living environment here. People have talked about how they've seen uh, many more birds come into the site, how they really appreciate hearing the running water that they could not hear before. It's also kind of created a place in the community in which people really focus on. They, they come here to take their walks, they walk the creek, they circle it, and they're always looking and seeing how the thing is changing with time and, and through the seasons as well. I'd like to see projects like this be applied to a site like the North Branch of the Royal Seco. A frequent comment I hear in Southern California is, well, it's okay for you folks in Northern California to daylight streams. You have a very different environment than we do. I want you to appreciate the fact that this site is surrounded by housing, schools, playgrounds, and there's a daylighted creek right in the middle of this heavily urbanized site. Thank you so much for coming this afternoon for our creek celebration, which is the culminating activity in our Stream Spirit Rising program. A number of you have participated in the workshops for the last three weeks and helped us to make masks and got to see some images of the creek that used to run through here. The reason we're starting this parade at this location is because the creek used to be right there on the other side of this bluff. And I wanted you guys to have the opportunity to see physically where it used to be. We had a wonderful creek celebration and walked through the community with our masks and our dragon puppet and with noisemakers celebrating the creek. So we basically brought to life those very feelings that a creek can evoke and we ran it through the community just like a creek would run. You might ask why would you dig up a creek that's underground? One reason is uh, an elementary school wanted to provide educational opportunities for the children. Another why is it helps solve stormwater management problems, a very practical issue in urban areas. It gives open space relief in very crowded cities. This was an idea that was somewhat fringe, let's say in 1982. This is now a mainstream idea where communities all over the world are doing these projects. It's time for Southern California to join the mainstream. Mm -hmm.